Um, we hired Sarah last year to be our um, sixth grade and ninth grade history teacher. And um, she was doing a fabulous job. We, we actually loved um, the work she was doing with the kids. And then the earthquake in Haiti struck. And she had been to Haiti and had done work in Haiti on the ground with a group called Amert and had connections there and decided that she needed to go to Haiti um, to, to do work there. Um, it, Haiti only just made the news again because of the cholera epidemic that broke out, what, a week ago. Um, and so it just hasn't been in front of us since um, the aftermath of the quake and it's back in front of us and Sarah walks in our door and gives us an opportunity to reconnect. Um, and I asked her what she needed and she said it would be great if our kids could make books for her kids because they don't have books, don't have anything of their own and we can't really use word books because they don't speak English so she suggested number books so pictures of number one with an item, number two with two items and I asked the lower school faculty if they'd be interested in um, creating the drawings and middle school could laminate and bind them and send them down and I asked a half hour ago I already have three positive responses and I expect to get a few more so we'll be making um, a handful of books to send to Sarah to share with her children um, down there. The situation in Haiti isn't really transforming mm -hmm. uh, greatly. It's a very slow process. Haiti was unfortunately facing so many challenges before the earthquake. Um, majorly is that Port-au-Prince was the center of everything. And the fact that the earthquake hit their hub really destroyed the whole infrastructure of the whole country. The, the immediate needs are fading into the backdrop and we are not out of disaster mode. Well, the NGO that I work for is very small. It's been in Haiti for um, more than 20 years and they work on the principle of involving the, the grassroots communities first. Everything that we do is um, side by side. We go to a camp and we look for the leaders we look for the women. We look for the people who are already um, exploring possibilities and ideas of how they want to improve their communities. And we do not go with a strategy. We listen to their ideas and then help them develop their own strategies that would be relevant and sustainable. So what we're doing is focusing on the children because we need to specialize in something and and focus our resources um, and we're trying to expand the work because we know that the children first need to be healed they need to be fed they need to be treated for diseases but more importantly their psychosocial needs after such a traumatic effect, uh, event need to be addressed we're working with 6,000 children and teenagers and also now mothers of our participants and we're working in six different camps, all within Port-au-Prince area. And we are constantly growing the program. So the, the children arrive around 7.30, and immediately we give them something to eat, because most children do not eat breakfast in their homes, or in their tents. So without, a, without something to eat in the morning, they would be very tired the rest of the day. After they eat breakfast, we do a circle of love where the children sit together and we start with silence, we then sing songs, we play news ball where they can go around in a circle and share something if they wish. Uh, then they do some stretching, some yoga to involve their whole body. And then children have different choices of activities to go to. So they could go to the art tent, they could go to the music tent, they could go to the, the games tent and they go to three different activities and then by noon they eat a hot lunch and then their parents come to pick them up. So it is our, our hope that within the three different activities that they go to every day, we're training the art 
teachers. We're training the music teachers and the games teachers to do literacy and numeracy activities. It's completely infused. If we could send to Haiti a bunch of books, because it's, because it's very hard to find books in Creole in Haiti uh, or that have pictures that are dynamic, that are interesting, colorful. Uh, if we could send cartoon books, comic books, picture books, handmade by children here to children there, it would not only give them something to read, but it would also give them ideas of what they could make and telling their own story. It's important to continue putting pressure on our government to advocate for longer temporary shelter for Haitian refugees, to put pressure on the government to actually put the USAID money that is being spent in Haiti to good use in a transparent way. Um, it's also important just to continue having the dialogue of what is going on, why is it this improving faster. Uh, if it's in the discourse, then it will spread and hopefully get to Haiti. Here's one person who is working in an organization sustaining 5,000 children. To us, it's huge what one person is affecting, mm -hmm. and she feels like she needs to be doing so much more. And I need the kids to see that one person mm -hmm. can, in fact, affect the lives of so many children. Um, it, it's inspiring for us to know that one person. Um, maybe they can believe that they can be that one person in the future. So.